Hello guys, thank you for being with us. Um, so we, are, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Let's go. Um, so we are Vierge Cloud. I'm with Xavier Nicole, who is the uh, public cloud uh, infrastructure director. Ladies and gentlemen, the sessions will commence in five minutes. <laughs> or not. I repeat, <laughs> the sessions will commence in five minutes. Okay. Ah. <laughs> okay, so let's go. Um, Xavier Nicole, who is the, the, the <laughs> Public Cloud Infrastructure Director, yeah, not easy, yeah. Master of the Universe uh, for Public Cloud. Um, and Antoine, who is helping us, is uh, the hiring officer, so hope you will have a, a, a huge success. And myself, I'm the, the product manager for our Public Cloud, infrastructure layer of the Public Cloud. And, and today we'll talk about SRE, but not only. Um, first, we'll talk about um, the, the way we do the cloud, and uh, and then uh, and then focus on how we we maintain the, the the quality of service at scale. Okay, so let's go. Maybe maybe every, everything here is uh, is something you know. I'm not sure about that, and maybe all the information I will share you, you heard it again. I mean already, uh, but it always it's always. Um, very, very uh, I mean, necessary to know where we come from to better understand where we want to go. So um, our, our journey started in uh, 1999 in the north of France. And, uh, and let's say we, we quickly showed that there, there is not only one way to do the cloud. Okay, so we've been initially motivated by efficiency and I would say uh, uh, sustainability, sustainability as well. Um, and, and so we, we, I mean, we, we showed that we, we could do basically uh, the, the cloud an alternative way. We started to, to, to build our data centers and, uh, and, and yeah, going out of the, the standard sort of, of legacy uh, coming from uh, on-premises era, okay? So building our, our, our own data centers, not only, uh, this is not only about the, the way we use the space um, or we, we rack the hosts, but, uh, but uh, also about, uh, I mean, the, the way we, we cool the infrastructure, no AC, uh, everything, is, uh, everything is water cooled. Uh, so we, I mean, this is the model we have since the beginning. This is the model we still have. Um, I'm not up to date uh, on the, the number of patents we have around uh, uh, water cooling technology, but it's huge. Uh, all our infrastructure is water cooled, uh, and a lot of water. Uh, last year, average uh, power usage effectiveness is around 1.1, 1 .1, 1 .1, I mean, which is quite good. Um, and so, I mean, if you if you got that, like efficiency along with sustainability, this is this is what drives our way to create and operate the cloud at scale. And, and, and this is what made us a sort of industrial, uh, I mean, this, in this cloud market, okay? Um, and I, I can testify as well that, I mean, if, if I mean, the, the visit of uh, an OVH cloud data center is something like uh, uh, really a part, okay? Um, since uh, 2002, I mean, really quick, I mean, uh, in our story, we started to, to, to design and build as well our, our servers. Uh, we basically, I mean, uh, um, uh, create our racks out of um, sheets uh, of, of metal, metal sheets, and, and assemble ourselves, I mean, all the components necessary to, 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 to get our servers. Our, we have two factories, one in, in Roubaix, uh, which, I mean, Croix, now, uh, which delivers, yeah, which delivers, uh, but in the north of France. Um, delivered everything uh, we need for Europe and, and one other factory in Beauharnois uh, which delivers everything we, we need for the America continent. Um, well, in, in a deep control at all the, you know, the, the, the step of, of the chain, let's say, in a, in a fully integrated model and um, from the data center to the server and as a consequence, like, it, it's, uh, I mean, you, you get now, I mean, you know, um, that there is no trap behind this price pair ratio, like what made us kind of success. And, uh, and uh, this is just a consequence, okay? 
And uh, we have this parallel as well with the network. Like we invested a lot in, uh, in our network. We, I mean, we own our backbone. And, uh, and this is, uh, for example, why the, the egress is still included in the, in the price of the compute uh, in OVH Cloud. Um, yeah, some, some figures about the scale, because size matters sometimes. Um, we have more than yeah, 450K instances running. Um, more than 360 petabytes of uh, physical space used uh, I mean, currently, and, uh, and more than 7.8 billion billion of requests uh, per month. So, I mean, that's that's really impressive. And given the the, the, the number of uh, OpenStack regions, I mean, the, the scale is is becoming totally crazy. Okay. So. I mean, we are in control, so we are a cost leader. We are in control, so we are a sustainable cloud. And, and, and now let's talk about I mean, how to be in control at, at that level of scale, about the, I mean, in control of the, the quality of service uh, for uh, end customers. My turn? I think so. OK. So I'm going to take it from here. Hello, everyone. Uh, so as uh, we said, we, we run like nearly half a, half a million instances that we present. Uh, we're going to soon be in the club of the million core cluster. Uh, we run uh, about uh, 40 regions all over the world. That means we needed to find an operation model that allow us to grow, keep growing, and maintain and improve the quality of service for our customer uh, the right way, and keeping developing new features. So uh, about three, four years ago, we decided to implement and adopt the SRE uh, methodology, let's say that, in the, in the infrastructure and in the team. So main secret, know what's going on in your infrastructure. So we start a, a large project of observability, and we gather uh, billions of SLI in our infrastructure to know what's going on um, live and be able to uh, or self fill the infrastructure or uh, lead what's going to be the work from some squads in our, in our teams that uh, develop and improve the, the, the system. Um, so we are basically SLO driven in our, in our infrastructure, meaning that um, today, I mean, let's, let's go back in time. Just before the pandemic, uh, the team that uh, I have the chance to lead today were about, were about 30 people. Uh, to manage this, uh, we were able to double the, the size of uh, this team during the pandemic, which was a, a very big challenge. Uh, but we were able to do that. We were about now 60 people running this. Uh, it's not a lot of person, and we need to be very focused on the quality of service and at the same time trying to develop new feature, maintaining with the version, I mean, upgrading the cluster, um, and being as close as we can from uh, the last version of OpenStack, which is not uh, easy for us sometimes. Um, so how, how we did that? Uh, today we are 60%. We are organized by squads, um, meaning that our team that are very spread all over the world because there's people from uh, India, uh, from Poland, from UK, from France, from Canada, from US, and we all work together in the same team on the same project with the same uh, goal. Um, so people are able to work on the specific uh, technology or part they are more interested to, and we allow all the team to be able to move and change from, uh, from one squad to another as soon as they uh, want to work on a specific topics. The goal is here to always improve, and it's what we we have all in mind: improve the quality of service we deliver to uh, our, uh, our our customers. So, um, this organization allow us to, as I said, um, doing some rolling upgrade of the infrastructure. Uh, we have tens of thousands of compute hosts, as you can imagine, um, and we are able to upgrade those uh, region um, on a monthly basis right now uh, and um, be able to uh, reach as much as we can the last version of every module, uh, which is, uh, again, another challenge. Um, something and to improve this process, a few, I mean, now two years ago, uh, we started a, 
a project to run OpenStack on the top of Kubernetes, meaning that we have to deliver a Kubernetes cluster running on bare metal servers to run OpenStack infrastructure that allow us to run Kubernetes cluster for customers on the top of it. So that's one of the big challenges we have today. Uh, that's going to allow us to improve and update and fix the infrastructure faster. We were able to have a, um, a very important, um, I mean, to achieve some goals uh, in the self filling of the infrastructure. Again, you're going to deep dive fast in, in one of them. Uh, when you run that amount of um, compute host, you always have hardware failure every day and we need to uh, manage that automatically. So we are able today to detect in advance, uh, migrate uh, VMs, uh, switch, I mean, get off uh, of production, the, the, the instance that, I mean, the, the computer was that's not working well. Then we have people in data centers managing them and all this is automatic on our side. So there's no intervention of human or SREs in this. The guys in data centers fix the server. If we know exactly what's, going, what's wrong in the server, we, we tell them and they fix even faster. But uh, that's how, how we work today. So we have achieved a level of uh, automatization uh, in the self filling that allow us to run a, a very uh, large cluster automatically and with not a lot of human intervention on the cluster. Um, as I was saying that we are 16 in the team today and we allow us to have only one person 24 seven, so in average, uh, to be in charge of managing alerts manually. The rest is fully automatic. And that's uh, the, the biggest achievement we had for the last years that allow us to, again, focus then on new features. And in the new features we're gonna have, it's um, mostly right now, I have some notes because uh, Many things. Sorry. Uh, yeah, we're gonna. Um, we have today in alpha and beta version for customers some uh, Octavia service, a load balancer of the service that's gonna be available generally um, by in uh, that fall. Uh, running with Barbican because we need it, of course, for SSL certificate. And um, second big project is we're running Ironic, and it's gonna be the bridge between the the uh, main business of OVH for the last 20 years to be able to start bare metal servers on uh, Cloudway in OpenStack, with the OpenStack uh, uh, APIs. Um, I'm gonna just go a bit on the big picture here. Uh, around the OpenStack, uh, I have two minutes left. <laughs> around the OpenStack um, ecosystem, OVH has acquired uh, two companies for the last years uh, around storage. Uh, so an object storage company in OpenIO and block storage company named Extend that run uh, block storage uh, on NVMe, sorry, over Fabric. So we're working very hard to have this product live. Uh, we already have, if I correct, the high performance one for object storage. And standard in beta. And standard in beta. And we're gonna have next year the high performance, I mean, we speak of millions of IOPS per block storage uh, on the block storage part. We are very involved in the OpenStack community and the open source community, sorry, on, for this because we want to open source those two technology as soon as they're gonna be ready. Um, on another side, we are working and developing some, um, some services around data management. Uh, we develop services around database service, some machine learning, and uh, some AI process for our customer to have it as a service. So as a short conclusion, um, if you want to be part of a, a team that run uh, one of the biggest public cloud cluster on OpenStack, and if you, wherever you are in the world, I want to precise that is again, we, we are very spread out and it's not an issue wherever you are, contact <laughs> Antoine or myself, come to speak with us. We will be uh, very welcome. Um, we, we will be. We will welcome you a lot. I mean, we are hiring right now, and we need to grow fast. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Do Do we have a few minutes for Q and A, or, or is Wait, it just? <laughs>
<laughs> what? Sorry? One minute. One minute? OK. So does anyone have, have, sorry, does anyone have question regarding, well, our technological stack or our, our company culture and how we implemented a, a salary model in OVH Cloud? You have a microphone over there if you want. J just there in the front. In the front over there. <laughs> you said about uh, uh, achieving high, high availability of uh, uh, virtual machines uh, and uh, automation of uh, in failover of uh, uh, compute nodes and virtual machines. So my question is how, how do you achieve this? And um, if, if you are using uh, maybe Masakari with something else. I'm not sure to get your question. I mean, about the availability of one instances? Uh, failover, automation of failover of uh, virtual I know, that's, machines. That, I mean, the automation is about the self-filling, what I was explaining. So when we detect that a server gonna fail, because you can see that in advance most of the time, we are evacuating the server, moving it to another instance so, alive. So you do it uh, manually? No, no. Automatic, no. fully, and we have uh, some Mistral workflow managing that. Mistral, Com Mistral, yeah, Mistral for running it yeah. and detecting it. It's all observability system based on... Mon uh, monitoring. Sorry? By, mo by monitoring, but uh, yeah. are, are you using uh, Masakari project? No. No. No, no. no. we are running observ uh, observability runs on... Um, uh, Prometheus and Thanos, and that then uh, we we engage uh, some uh, workflow with Mistral if we need to. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.